Hey everyone, uh, Joe Lines here from the Automator. Today I have Ryan Wells. He's from the, in the Auto Hockey Hero Group, and he's also doing using AI as much as I am and ChatGPT and all this stuff. And so uh, we're going to walk through some of the fun things, uses we've used it for recently this last week, and some great resources that we have available. Um, so welcome, Ryan. I know you've been on our channel. Right, Let's start off with some of the, the use cases. One I had was I was watching a video and they were talking about how you can use tone and this and that in, from famous people. And I'm like, why don't I have ChatGPT have a conversation between Bill Gates and Steve Jobs about auto hotkey, right? And it was, and, it, and I had it created. And then at the end, I just added a little bit of like, oh, and that's where I inserted. And by the way, the automator has great training on this, right? <laughs> yeah. But it was a really yeah, fun fantastic. case. Yeah. There's another example of that where I've seen uh, for children, I'm able to talk to their cartoon characters so they can uh, have a chat oh, with Barney Rubble. Or, that's wild. So it's lots of, yeah. So it's not just about, um, you got to no. think about it, it's not just about um, in the professional business conversations, but actually characters in the sense of cartoon characters and others. So it's exciting that's, and amazing. Wow. Yeah. So another thing um, this week that we've been looking at is file previewers. So when you're using a Windows PC and you are going through a file dialog box and you want to find a particular file or look for a particular script, um, with file previewers, what you're able to do is view inside, see inside a, a file, whether it's an image or, an, or a um, text file, an AHK script, without having to open up uh, AHK Studio or Site or any other program. So using file uh, preview technology, you're able to see inside documents without having to open them, Joe. And that's um, a real great time saver if you're in a hurry to, to find programs. Yeah. And to get that started, I went into ChatGPT and just said, hey, write me an auto hockey script that will edit the registry to look at the preview handlers because I didn't know where it was. And it actually mm -hmm. showed me the keys and where I had to go. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I'll take it from here because it didn't do everything I wanted, but it was a, it was a really great start to, to get into there. Now that's another great thing about ChatGPT, as you say, you have a, the crystal that you have an idea, and it can point you in the right direction and help you with your research or even write a sample piece of code. Now, particularly when you know what you're trying to achieve, but you don't know how to write it in a particular uh, script or an auto hotkey version one or two, it, it's extremely helpful. Well, I would actually add to that, Ryan, because the other thing that I realized was. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't really, they're not good writers and they get, I don't want to call it writer's block, but they try to write and they get frozen and they take forever editing while they're writing. And I think most people do know you shouldn't edit while you write. You should just write a draft, get it down and then go back and edit. And that's one of the biggest things I see ChatGPT doing for me is I no longer hesitate at the beginning and then painfully get something down. It creates a draft of what I want almost instantly. And then I go back and adjust it and tweak it. Right. And it's like, mercy like it it just really gets me going so much faster and it's makes it, it kind of gamifies it too it makes it fun yeah absolutely i think that you know if people are not satisfied with the first response ask again and keep refining and, and the ability that it remembers what right. you're doing and you can use uh, all of the tools that we'll talk about today uh you know you can iterate upon and improve all the time you're learning it's learning and the the output can just only improve as as um everyone uses these tools and uh finesses the uh the output. Yeah, the other really quick one is the whole garbage in, garbage out. The more you kind of set the stage and give it some situations before you ask your real question, it really improves mm -hmm. what you're getting back. So just remember that when you're using any of these tools. So another yeah. fun one I used it for was we we actually wrote a tool and we were having someone go through like the um the system 32.dll and there's an image res dll or something, right? The, there are like four or five there's probably a lot more, but on Windows and they're like everything back to XP, there are these DLL files that have tons of icons built into them, right? And the problem is there's no tags associated to them. So you can't search. You have to open the file and look and find with the picture of what you're looking for. And I said, screw it. I'm going to ask ChatGPT, hey, in this DLL file, wh where is a picture of, you know, a, a blue music sign or whatever? And it And it tells you, it gives you the index. So I was like, oh my God, now I don't have to search and you know try to find it. It can just tell me. It actually gave me several. Here are some that might match what you're looking for. And I'm like, oh, that's freaking awesome. You bet. So so this next one, I uh I belong to a, a Pat Flynn community and I'm not gonna knock it, right? And I'm I'm just I, I joined because I want to understand Circle, the community that they're using. But um, it, it's not, it was like 30 bucks a month for the version I was using, which isn't horribly priced, but because 
I'm already pretty technical. I wasn't gaining a lot of value. I really want to see how circle works, the environment, not, not really, you know, just anyway. So I wrote them and I, I, let me rephrase that. I asked chat GPT to write them for me and say, explain to them that like, Hey, you know, your, your service is awesome, but I don't get a lot of value of it. Therefore, unless you drop the price, I'm going to quit. And it wrote a really nice, clean, you know, email for me to them. Um, so that was just really cool because it saved me a lot of time in, Again, the tone, you can change the tone, make it more fun, make it whatever. And it's just nice that you can do stuff like that. The other thing you can do with that as well is you can write it in the tone of somebody else. So if yeah, you absolutely. like a particular author, you can say, write this in the, the the tone of a particular author you like. And it really helps you. You know what the inputs are, what you want to say, but it really helps you um, phrase things, as you say, in a much more um, soft way or a tough way. You can have a tough conversations, easy conversations, um, and write a proper email just from a few prompts. You know, right? That's an interesting, um, not observation, but because I, I I get it also. But it, um, it I hadn't dawned on me of let, let's say you're a manager and you're not quote unquote mean enough or direct enough, right? You don't like confrontation. You can make ChatGPT be the bad guy in writing it firmer. You know what I mean? Like you can yes. give it that little bit of oomph without you having to do it. So if it's not part of your nature, that's I think really powerful because. How do you write stuff if that's not part of how you think, right? That's really hard. And also, if English is not your first language, then you can write in the context of someone who, who is a Native American English speaker, right. you, a British English speaker, or it really helps sort of knock off the edges and make sure that you're, you know, hitting the mark in the right context in the right way. Yeah, I was actually reading a book. Um, oh, it's out in the car. I was going to show it. It's uh, it's really interesting and fun. But it was talking about, it was an older guy talking about the doctor and stuff. But he they were mentioning the importance of vocabulary and that people understand. It was a, a Jewish guy that after the Jews were being exterminated and Nazi and they came over to the U.S., he was in accounting, but he couldn't get a job. Even though he was highly skilled, he took a job making, I think he said, $35 a week or whatever. Back then, that still probably wasn't terrible. But anyway, um, he couldn't get a job in his field. And he kept interviewing and no one would hire him. And he realized his vocab, his accounting terminology, even though it applied, the words they used were very different. And so he'd go to interviews and people couldn't really understand him properly. Like they thought he didn't know what he's doing. I, I've run into this a lot with statistics. It's just, regression is regression is regression. But people who don't understand statistics don't understand. It's the same damn model. Like depending on what you call things, doesn't really matter. But with, with ChatGPT, you could instantly convert your... You know, like your even your CV or your resume into something that's closer to the job you're applying for, right? Like so, and yeah, absolutely. And just to build upon that as well, if you've got questions that you need to ask and you're interviewing someone or you're being interviewed, right. why don't you ask oh. ChatGPT right. to give you the uh, questions or the answers to the questions right. that you might be asked, or give you a summary of the doc of the company or the um, or the resume that you are having to uh, read? It can interpret the resume. So here is the person. What questions would you ask someone like this related to your company? So there's lots of power there in terms of the interpretation of documents and then helping giving you the building blocks, whether it be writing some content like you were talking about an email or responding in a, in, as uh, prompts, uh, verbal prompts for you when you're asking questions or um, seeking answers. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, not that we're recommending you have ChatGPT open during the interview. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. Of course, it times out. You're like, um, hold hold that thought. Yeah, yeah, unavailable right. at the moment. So I have to pause the interview. <laughs> so, all right. So uh, one, and maybe you guys saw the video, but it, so we're getting into some of the services I've used in, in Synthesis. I don't know. Dot io. I'll put the URL up here. Um, it was I, I I read the post and I'm like, oh, this is really interesting. You can give it an image, and it will adjust that image and tweak it and give you a couple options if I remember right, or you can just rerun it through it, but that are not copyrighted. So it allows you to be, it's creative enough to change it enough where they're saying like, oh, there won't be copyright issues. And uh, what was funny was I, I took an image and I put it in there, but the image had a lot of text in it and it went bonkers, but I did try it on some other ones. I didn't document, but it was a pretty cool thing that uh, you can borrow from someone else and tweak it just enough where you don't know, you can still use it and not worry about it. Yeah, yeah, you bet. So I guess maybe we can jump in, Joe, to some ideas around some of the places that, you know, you can find some of these yeah. great tools. And then um, and then following that, maybe we'll call out some of the ones that we found um, during the last week that have been really um, eye-opening for us and some different use cases to give you guys some, some inspiration about how you might be able to apply um, chat GPT and AI further in, in your projects and in your life. 
Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, the the AI there was a lot of them. I call them AI aggregators, right? It's just there are places where you can now go and say, you know, I'm looking for this, but it's only going to pull back AI services and you know things. And uh, FutureTools.io. It's interesting because they have just like I described that you can put in there and you can add filters on types and categories, or you can just do a plain text search. But that same site also has a, a page that has recent news and articles and it's it's not like we're doing right here it's much more in the weeds so it's much more if you're really in this as a, a developer um so it's really good for that i wouldn't I, I thought about linking to it and like telling people but i'm like it's i started looking what they're posting and i'm like that's it's pretty in the weeds um it's a really good resource but i wouldn't if you're the average user i wouldn't be looking at it so another one on the same uh, the same sort of genre is one called uh futurepedia and that's got over 700 different um uh, AI tools that are segmented by genre. So um, often people think about uh, AI just uh, being in the context of, of uh, text-based input and output. But um, as we'll come on to when we show you some of the top tools this week, there is a whole lot of uh, tools that serve very specific purposes, both functionally and also creating stuff around uh, resumes, around audio, video, uh, writing is a huge one, and then also um, programming automation as well is a huge area, a huge category. So uh, Futurepedia is another example of one of those aggregator sites where yeah. you can see and search on genres and uh, categories. Yeah, and then there's an AI for that.com also is another, another one. Again, these are very similar. Um, you can go there. What I did also, by the way, like we had a, a new client come on board. He was a lawyer and he hadn't started using it yet. So this morning I went into these sites and said um, law. And then I also said, oh, there was another term I used. I can't remember what it was, but it doesn't matter. I anyway, I sent him those links and said, hey, here are some you might want to look at. Right. So it was a way to help people tailor because ChatGPT, it's so general and people don't understand what it is. This is where when you have a specific thing, it's a little easier, I think, for people to grasp early on of like, oh, oh, this is what it does. Because ChatGPT, there's no, this is what it does. It does 8 billion yeah, things. Yeah, that's very true. So these are often a lot of these tools on both those websites we just mentioned are very niche down. So they serve one particular purpose and are much more focused, whereas ChatGPT is a, is a Pandora's box and you can uh, do all sorts of magic, but they are much more focused and they may also give you some inspiration. Speaking of which, I, I'm on a Facebook group and it said something like, what is the best thing, your best use to, of money making for ChatGPT that you've seen yet? And people, some people are like, I'm not saying, you know, like they're blah, blah, blah. And I said, it's a babysitter for adults. Cause like it, you start using it and then there goes out. You're like, oh my, what, what, what happened? What day is it? Like, it just, it's so amazing, right? It's really cool. Mm -hmm. This last one here, huggingface.co, I think it was really interesting in that, it's a preview of a lot of AI things out there. And I think you were mentioning it's also some, some it's similar to something else you were thinking of. Yeah, so Hugging.co is, uh, is a little bit different to the others, where the others are aggregating a list of sites. These are sites that are often beta or alpha. They're being developed, if you like. It's a, think of it in some ways, if those of you familiar with GitHub, it's like a uh, GitHub for AI tools. So they are hosted AI solutions that are often in development. And what's really great is that uh, you often can see the code, you can run them in the cloud on the platform, you can sign up for free, and you can try out a whole bunch of tools that are either um, in development or in uh, um, new releases before they're released to the, the public, everything on there is free. And it's a really great um, place to find cool new tools and see how the technology is really growing fast. And perhaps the, the most famous Hugging Face uh, repo is Stable Diffusion, which is the image-driven um, um, AI text-based to text-to-image generator. That's hosted on Hugging Face, and you can find lots more really cool stuff uh, on that website. Yeah, and one just to, as an example, also because I I only you know dabbled on it, but uh, and I don't remember if it was the one you're talking about or a different one, but it had to do with images, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. had it where you could say, do twelve images of this, and because the one that actually you would use would only generate one at a time, and it basically just put it into a loop for you and would you know automate twelve of them, mm -hmm. and so that was you know it is a great way to they're they're automating the automating stuff. Yeah, you bet. And then when you consider that, uh, as you say, Joe, you can uh, change the parameters all in this web interface, put the text query in, run it, and then you can uh, pick the best image and iterate upon that. 
It's a really great uh, playground for those of you that are interested, not just in image manipulation and things like that, but to yeah. see the latest cool stuff that's coming in a pre-release uh, environment. Right, exactly. As I say, the pre-access is the uh, to me the pre-access and the freeness are two amazing, you know, yeah. functionality things. Check it out. Things about it, you yeah. Bet. So let's start getting into some specific ones now. Crisp AI, we actually signed up for this with for Isaiah so far, and because he has a lot of background noise off and stuff, and it's especially because he's right now recording a course for us. It's really annoying that you have this in the background. And Zoom does a pretty good job, not a perfect job, but a pretty good job on its own. But uh, we were really impressed with Crisp AI. And audio is a really big area that people uh, obviously fixated on text input and video and imagery, but actually uh, audio and video is a huge area for AI. And another tool um, building on what you mentioned, um, Beethoven.ai, I think will play on Beethoven. Um, and that's royalty-free music. So you can create your own custom tracks the mood, the genre, et cetera, and you can create your own custom audio to use on your podcasts or as introduction to your videos or for your own personal use and um, super exciting application for AI. Yeah, I, I agree. And it, it was always annoying for me if I would at times want to make, you know, most of our videos are kind of raw and it's just, you know, we're just nailing it. You know, it would be nice to be able to throw in some music on some of the stuff. And that's where finding that, you know, audio that's, uh, copyright free without spending a fortune or time it's annoying so yeah that's great the the other one was clean voice ai it's interesting that you can you can do it for podcasts right just dump in your stuff and edit and um clean your podcast stuff which is awesome yeah and whilst you're talking podcasts there's a, a website uh or an ai tool called podcasts and they build themselves as the one-stop shop for broadcast storytelling and they do um, some exciting stuff around managing um, the input, the different uh, the different audio that you need, the, the video and the uh, music, and help you do the editing. So uh, things like silence removal and things of that nature, all possible in AI, and really help you create a very professional podcast output. If you're a newbie or you're a you're a pro, a tool like Podcastle.ai can be a really useful useful tool in harnessing those UI, so those AI editing uh, functions. Illustrate. <laughs> Yeah, you can create images, vector images from text prompts, which there's a lot of stuff for creating. The fact it was doing vector images was something that I hadn't seen yet. So that, that was cool. Yeah, vector and vectors, are, for those of you in the graphic community will know how important vectors are because you can create an image of any any size whatsoever. And, and building on that, there's a tool, um, an AI tool called patterned8.ai. And that's exciting because you can create custom patterns for uh, um, outputting physical items. So you could have... Um, wallpaper, cushions, throws, uh, even, and obviously, you know, back in the digital realm, you can have digital wallpapers um, based on patterns. So so this is um, often a very hard thing to actually create um, uh, lots of different variations um, without being a very experienced um, graphic designer. But with uh, pattern.ai, you can create your own custom patterns, throw it into a program like, um, uh, Redbubble and create your own uh, own products, and then throw it on Etsy, and you've got your own marketplace with your own custom designs and your own custom patterns. So you can see how you can bring it together. A few of these different tools that we're talking through today, and and the the marketplace or the um, the library of different AI tools together, and create some exciting things from just the genesis of one idea, like the creation of patterns using Pattern.ai. All right, so our next one, and we've talked again, this is sort of similar stuff, but um, stock image or stock IMG.ai, generate the perfect stock photo you need every time. It, you know, it's stock images, I don't do them enough in my videos, and I should, but B-roll type stuff where you can throw it in there and not have to, you know, it, it just adds to it. it, it I know yeah. if I actually was trying to use YouTube to say, we're gonna get rich and get a lot, a lot of views. I should be doing more of that. Uh, that's not you know, our primary goal, so I don't do that, but um, it really does add to it. So yeah, it's a nice thing to be able to have. Yeah, if you're doing, uh, if you're doing videos, if you're producing, um, if you're producing podcast covers maybe uh, for different episodes or you're doing blog posts, stock images, uh, this stock uh, AI, uh, uh, side can be really helpful and just giving a lift and making it look a bit more personal and more relevant. Well, let me add to it real quickly because there's there's other sites that I've asked Isaiah and he uses like Pexels. I think there's two or three mm -hmm. he gave me. He's like, oh, here's where you can get free images. I go there and most of the time the stuff I find actually isn't free, you know, and it's really annoying. Yes. So 
to have a place where it really is, I don't have to worry about that. That would be really nice. And the other thing, just lastly on that one, is that you can also refer in your text prompts to images that you might identify with. So you can say, yeah. make it like this, or right. you can describe something you want and it'll alliterate on it. So let's move on to the Mac Daddy, probably one of the most uh, popular and established uh, tools for copywriting. And that's uh, copy.ai. And that's an amazing uh, tool, uh, which has the ability to author. Uh, if you're in any kind of digital marketing, you want to check out copy.ai. Uh, you can do everything from writing uh, blog, blog outlines, Facebook um, introductions, YouTube headlines, social media posts, um, long form article outlines, anything you could imagine in terms of copywriting. You want to check out copy.ai, a really great, great tool. If you're uh, anyone in product marketing, digital marketing, social media, you have a podcast, YouTube channel, make sure you check that out. Some really great value there. Totally agree. I actually, I, I subscribe to John Carlton, who's a, a very, very famous, world famous copywriter. And he just recently, this last week, wrote an article on ChatGPT and all of our, our jobs going away. And he's like, no, because his, his I didn't 100% agree with what he was saying, but I still agree. It, it, it's not there at an expert level, right? It, but hey, for, for you and I, it's, you know, it's probably much better than what we would do out of the box. So it really helps. But he was saying like, oh, it's not always accurate, which I, I totally agree. Like, again, you got to you gotta look at it and evaluate it. It doesn't solve it. It just gets you started. It gets you that first draft, gets you going. But yeah. again, also, I think like even my headlines to my videos and stuff, things I wouldn't really spend a lot of time on, the fact I can dump it into a, an AI tool and have it do it for me, um, and I'm like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm not going to put two hours of thought into this because it doesn't it doesn't really deserve it. But it does deserve me throwing it to the AI and letting it come up with something. So, yeah. That's and, that, a, that's, and that's a great point. Just in general, all of this AI stuff, it's an iterative process. You know, copy yeah, AI, when you use that, it can give you 10 options. You right. choose what works for you best. Right. You can chop and change from any of those, but um, use it as um, an aid. It's not the panacea, but it can make you go much further, much faster and give you ultimately great outcomes. Amen to that. Uh, this next one I like, uh, which I, I wish I wish companies would stop using monkey in their name, but copy monkey.ai. Uh, it, it, you can create Amazon listings uh, in second. I thought that was pretty cool of, again, a very mm. niche, but it makes it, hey, this is, because I know, because I have some stuff on Amazon that I sell, usually little children. No, I'm kidding. Um, but they have attributes and things, things that you have to, you need to fill in. And the fact it's tailored to it, right? I'm sure it provides you all the stuff you need, which is really cool. Yeah, that's going to help you, especially when you start to be a shop that's got a lot of SKUs, a lot of uh, items that can really help. So with all of these AI tools, the potential to um, really um, um, amplify your output in terms of whether it be make Amazon listings faster or in the case of content, we just talked about content.ai, create a lot more, a lot higher quality and a lot more frequent posts. You're going to want a way to manage that. And um, there's a great tool called um, okayo.com, O-C-O-Y-A.com. And that really helps you um, intelligently place uh, the social uh, media posts, so whether it be uh, announcing the YouTube post, announcing upcoming webinar, posting your Twitter account, uh, posting to all social media channels. And um, that helps you schedule 10 times faster the way that you um, manage your social media, if you're especially useful if you're going to be creating a lot more because of AI. Which, you know, it's one of those things uh, which I tell people, whether you're creating a course like, like we've done or a YouTube channel, whatever, the creation of your thing is half of the work. Then you got to publicize it and share it, right? And I used to use Buffer. I still have it installed. I just don't use it that often anymore because mm -hmm. I put everything in the QAP with my links mm -hmm. to the pages and I can very quickly dump what I want there. But it was really convenient to make me look like, because it was scheduled them twice a day to do my posts. There's one that starts with H. I think you used to talk about it. Hootsuite, you mean? Yeah, Hootsuite. Yeah. Hootsuite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple yeah. tools which do this, but um, still it's, this kind of approach, it's again, it's a great productivity tool, right? So it can make you um, mm, that much faster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you can use video, a, not AI, to, to create short form videos from long term content with, you know, very quickly, which again, if you have 
a lot of stuff that is a bigger thing. You can trim it down and share that multiple times, different ways, and even link to the longer version if people are more interested, right? So you get more bang for the buck after you've done the work. And, so that's and the thing I would say about all these tools, and people will be familiar with others. So for example, there's a, a tool that uh, has been out for a little while now, 18 months, maybe called Lumen.ai. And um, that tool, um, this technology is evolving extremely quickly. So even if you have seen a tool before that uh, you may know or be familiar with, um, do check out the ones that Joe and I are talking about today because this uh, this space is moving so quickly and the uh, quality of the output and the interpreters that are rendering these types of uh, multimedia assets is really improving at light speed. So it's always worth checking out the latest tool um, for the latest uh, high quality um, high quality output with the latest um, AI algorithms. Yeah, absolutely. So then. Uh, on a similar theme, um, there's a website, uh, Maverick, uh, the website's trymaverick.com, and you can, um, in, this is a really exciting application for AI, matching um, automation, uh, scalability, and the artificial intelligence to be able to create web content or video content at scale. So the idea here is using the technology and the AI to help you output vid unique video content or personalized video content for an individual. So if you are, uh, for example, in a company and you have uh, sales um, targets and you want to reach out to them, uh, personalized videos, check out Maverick. If you are someone who has um, a bunch of customers and you want to reach out to them and promote a particular sale, if they're a high value customer, you might want to, to try this tool as well to send uh, really personalized messaging in video format, often a lot more highly um, uh, high engagement and high value uh, content to people that, and they will appreciate that personal touch, albeit it's done through the assistance of AI. Yeah, well, actually, you know, you know, you and I were talking about it. I have a list of 400 people that are high level prospects. They've either spent money with me or they've downloaded a lot of stuff. And I, I'm going to automate, you know, an animated GIF in the thumbnail for the video for them. And it, 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 it's a really powerful when you see that animation, you know, having their customized name over the video it makes it, re and then the video like is me waving or something like that, right? Of like, hey, yeah. call me or something. Really makes a huge difference. I was say this is a really key way to differentiate and use this technology, as Joe Absolutely. was saying. Especially now. Not another email. Yeah, yeah. especially now. Because yeah. Yeah. because in, in six months or a year, people are going to be used to it, right? But now is a great time. To, people aren't aware of it. And um, even then, uh, the more you personalize things, the more people are bound to, to click and, you know, to, to look at it and feel like you're having a, a conversation with them. So that's what that's great for. Uh, this next one I love, and I'm going to have to start looking at this for the, like our hero group is to, to have an AI powered knowledge base where you can either do a chat bot or an AI where it can help answer questions for you. Right. And it's a wild world we live in where you can have automation do a help, at least at the beginning lines, right. Of to help people out. So that website was uh, puzzlelabs.ai okay. and, um, we did something, Joe and I, a little experiment a couple of weeks ago, even using chat GPT, and we did a word search. So we asked it to create a word search, I think using animals or countries, and uh, it built uh, like a crossword table. It can do that and also a word search. So, you know, you can have fun with your family, with your children, whatever, um, using these tools and create unique puzzles, unique games in the business environment in your personal life, it's um, very exciting what it can do. It helps them learn too, right? Which is awesome. Yeah, you bet. And then the last one to cover off in this um, section, we wanted to talk about otter.ai. Some of you may be familiar with that. It's an exciting tool that uses uh, uh, what's called conversational intelligence. So it listens, the way this technology is going is it listens to your calls. Uh, so your Zoom calls, your Microsoft Teams calls, and it will um, transcribe them but the real power comes when it interprets them. So it can uh, um, signpost particular points in the, in the conversation. And um, the technology now is starting to allow interpretation so you can understand the sentiment. So are we having a fun conversation or are we really upset about ChatGPT and the AI opportunities? So it can start to uh, particularly useful um, when you're trying to take the sentiment of people that you might work with or customers you might interact with, um, you can understand um, uh, what the uh, more clearly what how they are thinking or how they are reacting, and also identify in the context of a call with a transcript um, where the action needs to be taken. So if we uh, call out that we will send X or Y or 
we need to do this or that. You can find that out by, by using um, a tool like uh, otter.ai uh, and there are other tools like this available as well. But a really seamless way to add a tool like this to your tool set um, and really start to get some more insight into the engagements that you have. Yeah, um, that one called Adify, Thomas, he's a hero member. He took one of our videos and ran it through Adify and it summarized the video, put in timestamps, put in, you know, a little no notification of what was mentioned there. And because thankfully, because I had created the video, it was easy for me to look at it and go, wow, that's, you know, that's a pretty good summary. And so that was another one we were talking about doing for the hero, just saying, hey, you know what, make it easy for people to go back and use. And that's a really good point because uh, Otter, for talking like Otter, you can use it uh, in real time. So as we're having a conversation, it can do it can do these things and record and understand uh, the bookmarks of the elements. But you can also do it retrospectively, as you were saying, Joe. So you can take a piece of content that's existed before and you can feed that into a tool like Otter or there are other tools as well. And it will then interpret that. So you're not just stuck with the future. You can also review the past if you have a, um, you know, if you had a two hour long webinar that you didn't want to sit through, you could right. throw it into a tool like that and understand uh, what the key inflection points, the key points are in the, in the webinar. Yeah. So uh, again, yeah, it's, that's, it's crazy helpful for people, especially, you know, think about how this is going to change the workplace environment too, because mm. even if you attended the meeting, or whatever, but um, y there was a piece that you, Hey, you were there. Oh, it's recorded, but I didn't write this down or I didn't, whatever. It allows you to jump around in that, you know, video mm. or recording, or just get a quick summary of what did I miss? Did I miss anything important? And it could be really powerful because the other alternative is you listen to a two hour video, right? Well, a good little context on that, building on what you said was, uh, I was working for a company and we um, got access to a competitor's conference and we were able to record 50 hours of their wow. uh, presentations. Yeah. But we didn't have the time yeah, to listen, right, right. at least at the speed we needed to listen to it because we wanted to quickly understand the insights so we could react from a marketing perspective. So we're right. able, you're able with a tool like this to feed that into an AI tool like this, understand the key points, and then go back and deep dive into the videos where the, the key right. points are made. Because right. you can do it, we can assign the resources, but we don't necessarily have the time sure. to do the interpretation. That's a week's listening, whereas this can do right. it in you know, a much shorter time frame. Yeah, so Jackie, Jackie and I were talking the other day about oh, AI in general and everything, and he's really into it. and. Uh, he was mentioning, I don't remember the dates, but he's like, hey, you know, he watched this video. We're saying how everything that's like been recorded, you know, like books, electronic, you know, text, um, they were thinking I, it was like 2027 or 2025, like should be um, digested by AI within a couple of years. And if you think about it, like how man, humans, you know, like I, I might be pretty smart, hopefully, hopefully um, I can learn a fair amount of stuff. But this is all things recorded in all time, right? Like, and it's going to be under the roof of one brain, so to speak. And then he said, yeah. when you take into account audio and video, they said that was something like 2030. It's going to take, you know, because there's, there's so much of that also. But by 2030, everything that was in video and audio is going to be basically converted to text and then digested and understood and that's just wild, you know? I mean, mm. that is crazy mm. that how mm. things are going to change. And, and when you think actually with the AI tools and some of them we've spoken about today and some of them are available on those websites like Future Tools and Futurepedia we mentioned earlier, you can then recomposite that knowledge. So for example, you have a whole 360 life cycle. So you watch a two hour video, you, you put it through a tool like Otto we were just talking about, you understand the key points, then you could put that back into an AI tool and create your own video that's shorter, right. uh, a short pricey based on highlighting. The yeah, highlighting. So it's a circular economy. Yeah, absolutely. So it's hugely exciting. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you uh, got some value out of this or learned something, please like the video. It really helps us get more views. Thank you, Ryan, for joining me here. It's uh, we, well, Ryan and I, all during the week, we're back and forth. Have you seen this? Have you seen that? How did you use this? <laughs> yeah, it's wild. So um, it's just, it's really fun. You, and as we've been saying, like with ChatGPT, it doesn't do one thing. And this is where it it's your imagination is really kind of the limit, right? So 
help talking to other people and how they're using it, whatever, it can really help you understand. It's one of the things we do a lot in the hero group is share how we're using stuff. And it really opens your eyes to new things you could be doing that you're not doing. So yeah, check go check them out and uh, subscribe and uh, we'll share more in the future. Subscribe. What the hell, Ryan? What you want people to subscribe? I've got this YouTube thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.